Hello friends, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday between 1 to 1.30 p.m. I'm your host, Anilu Cuellar, and today we will be discussing why spontaneous order is the sweet chaos through which a free society can flourish. This is on my recent blog post entitled Spontaneous Order. Spontaneous order is the kernel of voluntary anarchy. Nature is replete with examples of successful, efficient, and beautiful systems existing without authoritarian rulers or masters directing their every detail. The human body at its most basic cellular relationships is a microcosm of anarchy that is reflected at every expanded level to the macrocosmic level of the relationships between planets orbiting around a star, stars swirling around a galactic core, and galaxies dancing in wonderful harmony to each other. They all exist in a sweet state of chaos or entropy that never abandon certain inviolable laws of physics and celestial motion. Lao Tzu, in his seminal work, Tao Te Ching, describes this entropy as, quote, When the Tao is lost, there is goodness. When goodness is lost, there is morality. When morality is lost, there is ritual. Ritual is the husk of true faith, the beginning of chaos, end quote. When one takes a cursory glance at nature, one may only see unmitigated chaos. However, upon closer inspection, recognizable patterns based upon immutable laws emerge that belie this initial conclusion. Clouds do not form in perfect circles or squares, yet they are, there are patterns. Animals do not march in rigid single file lines, yet there are patterns. The order that we have come to understand through our Quote, government schooling is in actuality oppression and tyranny of free and peaceful individuals. Our rulers genuinely understand that the concept of quote, government is one of the largest scams ever perpetrated on humanity. They understand that the emperor truly has no clothes. They understand that, quote, government is entirely faith-based and can only rule based on the tacit consent and obedience of the people. They understand that the swindle can only continue when the vast majority of the population remains in a perpetual state of hypnosis regarding its necessity. Open your eyes. Break the mental shackles. The lion sleeps no more. I end with a quote from uh, Friedrich Hayek, uh, quote, The particulars of a spontaneous order cannot be just or unjust. Nature can be neither just nor unjust. Only if we mean to blame a, a personal creator does it make sense to describe it as unjust that somebody has been born with a physical defect or been stricken with a disease or has suffered the loss of a loved one. End quote. Okay, so, <clears throat> spontaneous order. This is a, a fascinating uh, topic since uh, many of us have been brought up to believe that um, order and um, consistency, you know, government, is something they're, that they're synonymous, you know, and that uh, order must be handed down by authority, by, you know, those in power, those dictating and enforcing the law. Uh, that would be the law of, uh, of politicians, which is more accurately described as threats and commands backed by a gun, right? So this is the understanding that <clears throat> order is handed down, is uh, distributed from the top down, right? So this is a, an implication that the people are incompetent, are stupid, and are incapable of taking care of themselves, of managing their own lives, of having self-responsibility, right? And that if people were left to their own devices, that uh, society would crumble and we would all um, degenerate into a state of chaos, mayhem, and violence, right? <clears throat> so, as you read more and more of history and you study a little bit of economics, you begin to uh, reveal, you begin to understand the fallacy of this notion and how utterly absurd it is uh, 
that a few elite group of people making uh, laws behind closed doors have anything at all, any understanding of uh, the needs, wants, and desires of millions and millions of people, all right? You begin to understand how utterly ridiculous that idea is, how, you know, people behind closed doors who make, you know, uh, decisions in secret <clears throat> and choose to reveal only what they want to reveal to the public, <clears throat> how law, how, you know, how our society, how our society is expected to, you know, to run based on their um, personal whims and, uh, you know, based on their appealing to special interest groups, uh, this is beginning to become uh, quite absurd. So, you know, you look out into nature and we don't see authoritarian uh, structures. We don't see um, overlords and masters. We don't see, <laughs> you know, uh, governmental structures, artificial governmental structures as we see in uh, human society, right? Yet, um, there is relative peace, I guess you would say, and a constancy, you know, consistency that over time, you know, nature has remained, right? <laughs> it hasn't destroyed itself. What a surprise. <laughs> how, is, how is that possible? How is nature not self-destructed without authoritarian overlords, you know? <laughs> Isn't it, isn't it fascinating? <laughs> and, uh, and, and how it, it's amazing how, you know, talking about spontaneous order, how when, uh, you know, things at all levels um, are left to their own devices, you know, not only humans, but, you know, you look even deeper into human uh, physiology and anatomy. You look at the, the cell structure and you look at, you know, blood flow and circulation. You look at, you know, um, <clears throat> all of these, all of the different systems in our body that need to be maintained um, in order to uh, have a, a viable human being, right, or any animal, um, how much detail goes into that, right? And there is, you know, <laughs> there is nothing like what we would consider, you know, politicians or the, uh, you know, or, or political masters in charge, making the decisions, right? It's just, that's what you would call evolution, right? Things have just developed and adapted uh, to a certain way of living, right? So, so this is a, you know, it's a fascinating concept. And you can apply this to children um, growing up. You know, children have a natural and born uh, uh, curiosity and imagination. And um, if you allow that to flourish, well, beautiful things can happen, you know. Children teach you stuff all the time. They, they do unexpected things. They make unexpected connections that you would not necessarily make. Um, they, they will surprise you, you know. Uh, when you stop pushing your agenda onto them, when you, stop, when, when you stop dictating what they should learn, all right, and what you think is important for them to learn, all right, because... Um, in the life of a human being, if any stage of development is the closest towards, um, you know, is the closest to, you know, the natural state of being, uh, you know, which is, you know, without prejudice, without bias, without, um, you know, the influence of cultural taboos, it would be the children, <clears throat> right? They are, they are a blank slate. They are completely um, open to anything, right? They don't know what racism is. They don't know what sexism is or feminism or, you know, uh, <laughs> any kind of um, bigotry that we would associate with adults, right? They are taught these things, right? They are learned by uh, the society that they live in, right? So, so they are the, the finest examples of, a, um, of the natural state of being, the natural curiosity. And what do we do? We stifle that, we suppress it, and we shove them into a um, government indoctrination camp, also called public school, where uh, they are force-fed um, state-approved dogma for 12 years without end, um, and we call it education. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like if, uh, if I lock a woman in my basement... And I go down there and I, uh, 
you know, violate her every once in a while and I call that a, a relationship or my girlfriend, <laughs> you could see, you could see the, uh, the, the stark, uh, you know, um, inconsistency with that <laughs> or hypocrisy, I guess. Uh, so it's not education, okay? It's not, it's not education when you uh, force somebody to learn something, okay? Just in the same way that it's not a relationship when you force a woman to have sex with you, okay? So uh, we, should, we should call it for what it is, okay? And what it is is indoctrination, okay? And, uh, and it completely violates the, uh, the natural inborn curiosity that a child has, which is basically the first education, right? So if you really believe that uh, a child will not learn anything because you don't sit the child down and formally, quote, teach the child or, you know, instruct, uh, it's a very, it's a very uh, strange thing. You, you're, uh, you're fighting an uphill battle on a hamster wheel. You're, you're, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like um, there's a saying that says, um, a child who wants to learn, there's nothing that can stand in his way, right? A child who doesn't want to learn, nothing will convince him. <clears throat> nothing will get him to learn anything. All right, so. So we have to realize that, you know, there, there is um, a beauty, a beauty that we're all born with, okay? Each one of us is completely unique, and we all have our, um, you know, we, we all have our driving force. And if we, if we just are able to pursue that, beautiful, I think beautiful things can happen. I think, I think our society is completely held back. I think there, that the, so many inventions have not been... Uh, brought about, you know, we haven't seen the potential of what can, we can become, you know, because we have imposed all of these societal constructs that have hindered and inhibited our progress, you know, as a, as a species, so, as a humanity, as humanity, so, so, um, <clears throat> you know, it's very sad when you, when you don't respect the, uh, the spontaneous order that is, is capable of, of happening, you know, you, you don't you don't allow people the freedom of you know freedom of association, freedom to choose their uh, profession, freedom to um, pursue their dreams, their passions, right? When you don't when you don't respect that, you know, you're 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 losing immensely. You know, it's like uh, it's like the seen and the unseen. It comes back to that, you know, uh, called also called uh, the the broken window fallacy, right? Um, so, you know, all we see is what we, have, uh, what we have achieved today. You know, we achieved, you know, whatever, everything that you see that we've achieved, all the inventions, you know, it's easy. It's easy to say, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty cool, right? You know, how would life be without that? However, what is not seen is how many possible inventions and, you know, wondrous creations that have been stifled and not allowed to flourish, they had not been watered, right? Um, how many of those that have ceased to, to be realized um, have just been destroyed as a result of all of this, um, you know, let's say, you know, uh, uh, childhood spanking, corporal punishment, right, public schooling, uh, right, Gov indoctrination, um, you know, uh, and then you have, you know, different cultural taboos, societal taboos, wh wh whatever we, or traditions, what, what, what we expect each person in every specific culture to adhere to, and, you know, there's specific rules, you know, all these, all these rules that, uh, that society imposes on us really, um, you know, really holds us back, and, and that's the unseen, that's what we can't imagine, we can't imagine what we, we could have become. You know, had it not been for all these artificial constructs inhibiting our uh, creativity and imagination, right? Because you know, <laughs> it's not proper, right, for a, you know for a woman to do this, or it's not proper for a man to do that, or you know, it's not proper for a Muslim to do this or a Christian to do that, you know. Um, and we severely limit ourselves, and it's very tragic. So, so this is the broken window fallacy, right? Oh, you know, we, we must not only take into account the seen, but uh, what the unseen is. And, and by the way, what, let me explain a little bit of the broken window fallacy. It, uh, 
originated, uh, I think, with uh, Frederick Bastiat in his book, The Law, also uh, talked about uh, by Frederick Hayek in um, his book, uh, uh, Economics in One Lesson. And basically what it is, is a, um, you know, a person throws a window in a, th- throws a, sorry, throws a rock in a window, breaks a window, and so the, um, the shopkeeper has to pay to have the window replaced. So, you know, the, the theory is that, you know, the um, Keynesian economic theory would say, you know, that's great, that's, that's a stimulus to society because the, the window maker um, gets paid, he gets more money, right? So he can use that money and do whatever he needs to do, right? Pay for his child's education, pay for, you know, uh, food for a baker, whatever. So it stimulates the economy, right? Destruction stimulates the economy. That's the, uh, the broken window fallacy. And... Um, and so that's the, that's the scene, right? The scene is the money going from the, from the shopkeeper to the window maker, right? And the person who installs the window. Um, and that's all, that's all that is seen, right? But what we have to take into account is the unseen of uh, what that money, or let's say $1,000, what that $1,000 that the shopkeeper had to pay to the window maker to, um, to install his window, what he could have used with that thousand dollars, right? What he could have done with it. He could have expanded his business. He could have gotten more employees. He got. He could have taken his family out. He could have, you know, buy bought some more books. You know, used them for luxury or for entertainment or whatever, and improved his life. So, so this is the unseen, and this is um, this is what happens when when we have a society of uh, you know of uh, of rules and mandates and threats. Um, handed down from the top down, right? We we are destroying the, the... So basically, we can say that the larger that the state expands, the more this spontaneous order and individual... Hence, you know, the synonymous basically with individual freedom, uh, the more spontaneous order contracts and decreases, okay? It is an inverse uh, relationship, okay? So... You know, because, par- you know, government is basically a, uh, it's a parasite. You know, it's a parasite on the productive class. Um, you know, the productive class always comes first, right? You know, you always have to have, you know, people say, well, well which came first, government or, uh, you know, the productive class? Well, of course, you know, you can't have a, you, you can't have a, a parasite, you know, living on its own. A parasite needs a host, right? So the host always comes first and the parasite comes and um, uh, lives off of the host, right? So... Basically, the larger the parasite gets, the the smaller the host gets, or the weaker the host gets, and eventually, you know, the host can't maintain the parasite anymore, and the host will die. Okay, and and essentially, that's what will eventually happen in order for society to shift. If uh, and that would be the uh, the wealth transfer, the economic collapse. Um, but you know that that does not necessarily need to happen. You know, if if people could educate themselves about, you know, the nature of government and the nature of uh, laws and, um, and, you know, the monopoly on violence that we know, that we know as a state. Um, if, we, if we can educate people about this, then we don't need to go through that painful transition of uh, economic collapse and stagnation and decay. Okay, we can, we we can make changes now. We can make it. We can make it a smooth transition. Okay, it, it doesn't have to be painful. Um, but it really requires people to. Um, I hate to use the word wake up. Um, I, don't, I don't like to say people are you know call people you know they're sleeping. But people need to educate themselves. You know they need to um, just <laughs> you know read books and. Talk to your fellow man, make connections, and you know, grow your local community. And, and this, is, this is how we establish our freedom and our independence from our political masters. Okay? This is how we say that we don't need authoritarian overlords dictating our every move, surveilling our every move, inspecting, controlling, manipulating interest rates, um, you know, printing money. We don't need that to function as, as a... As a society as a successful society we can we can survive without it okay so um so this is this is you know this is what we need it's a very simple process is you know self-education now when i say education people immediately think of you know public school or uh college university but uh but no i'm not talking about that i'm talking about 
you know, buying books, reading yourself, you know, following your passion, whatever you want to do. Everybody has a passion. Everybody has their interest. You know, I don't care. I don't care who you are. Everybody has an interest. Nobody is, um, no, I don't think anybody is so stagnant and boring. I think everybody has a deep, um, uh, you know, desire to learn something, even if it's been suppressed for years or decades, right? And, uh, and it's never too late. It's never too late to, uh, to learn something new. You know, that's the thing. You know, when, once you stop learning something new, you know, you basically have spiritually died. And, um, and not long after that will be um, uh, physical death. So, you know, I think, it's, uh, I think it was Benjamin Franklin that said, um, many people die at 25 and they're not buried until 75. <laughs> right? So... So this, this reflects the idea that, um, you know, when you get caught in a pattern, in a routine of, you know, doing the same thing every day, going to work, you know, saving for your retirement, um, you know, just, you know, when you get caught, when you get stuck in that rut, um, it's, it's really uh, spiritually destructive, very much so. You know, you stop changing, you stop adapting, you stop you stop exercising the muscle of the mind, and it will atrophy. It will atrophy, you know, rest assured. That's just like any other muscle in the body. Um, the mind needs exercise, okay? It needs constant stimulation. And, uh, and you'll be amazed what can happen when you, <laughs> when you, uh, when you educate yourself on uh, many things. I would say, you know, economics is one thing that most people should understand, because it affects us all. However, again, you know, I it wouldn't be my place to uh, you know to, to to you know impose myself on other people because then I would be falling back on the uh, collectivist um, mindset, which is you know if I believe something, everybody should do it, right? If I if I don't like you know gay people, <clears throat> then you know they shouldn't have rights. If I don't like you know, um, black people, then they shouldn't have, you know, the rights. Or, or if I don't like dogs, then they should be banned. If I don't like this, you know, it's, <clears throat> this is the, the mindset that this is called the collectivist, collectivist mindset. And, and this is what, you know, um, it, it really divides us. It, it, um, it, it pits us against each other. All right. It, <clears throat> yeah, it, uh, it really, um, it's very dividing, right? And, um, and we have to realize that uh, there can be no, peace when when there is constant you know class warfare like that when people are constantly fighting each other and you know blaming this class for that class blaming the capitalist pigs or blaming the you know the entrepreneurs or blaming the business owners or blaming the uh <clears throat> the oil companies or blaming this and blaming that you know we have to realize uh what our common enemy is what our true uh oppressor is okay and uh and the, the, the idea is that government enables all of these, uh, well, I'll, I'll say specifically the special interest groups, the, uh, the artificial monopolies that arise and corporations that arise out of, uh, you know, um, uh, government help, right, through, uh, you know, through subsidies, through bailouts, through grants, through, um, <clears throat> um, you know, through, through, and, and then through the lobbyists, you know, who, who um, influence the politicians to pass a certain laws. So, you know, the, the rent-seeking and through the, um, yeah, so all these, all these nasty uh, <clears throat> offshoots that, that arise, like, you know, the, the tree, you know, the main, um, tr the main trunk of the tree and the roots is the state, all right, is, is the monopoly, is the initiation of force, okay, is the initi is the monopoly on violent uh, violence and aggression, all right? <clears throat> and you know you can say the bankers own own the government, but you know <laughs> it's uh, it's it's difficult. You know when the government has all the guns and has the propaganda, you know they um, they will enforce what they will. You know and uh, they they have the power, right? The um, the violence. So. You really, you really can't beat that. And so, so I think there's a, there's a quote by um, Henry David Thoreau. He said, uh, for every thousand people hacking at the branches, there's only one 
hacking at the root. All right, and uh, Henry David Thoreau was, uh, I don't think he ever expressly described himself as an anarchist or a voluntarist. I don't even think that word was, was uh, in, uh, in existence at that time. But uh, certainly in his writings and in the actions that he did, he uh, demonstrated himself to be um, a very spiritually strong and powerful man. And he, uh, he demonstrated his independence from, uh, most definitely from government. Um, and from those around him who like to, he, yeah, he, um, um, and there, I think there was a, uh, another quote, um, he said, I will, I will, something like, I will not have, uh, I will, I will, uh, I will beat the government, something like that. I will beat the government, um, I will live free of it, I will breathe after my own fashion, and we will see who is strongest. <laughs> so uh, yeah, he's a very, um, um, very intellectual guy, and uh, I, uh, I I admire a lot of his writings a lot. So so yeah, so so we have to recognize this um, the beauty of you know spontaneous anarchy, a spontaneous order, which is essentially voluntary anarchy. You know, people, the fact that people can govern themselves and they should, and along along with that self governance comes immense responsibility. All right, so you know, so liberty and responsibility come together, right? The uh, that you are, you know, captain of your destiny. You are the, you are the, uh, you know, the the leader of your soul. <laughs> you know, no one has rights over your body, right? It's the uh, concept of self ownership, self ownership, right? And uh, and property rights. That you are the sole um, person responsible for your actions. Okay, and and therefore you are the sole person that should um, enjoy reap the benefits of your actions, or con or uh, uh, conversely the uh, the detriments, right? Both sides. So, so you know we um, we should take responsibility for our own actions, right? Um, so you know having this idea of government as being a safety net, you know Medicare, Medicaid, you know Social Security, uh, you know welfare, EBT cards, all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> These are all uh, social um, nets, right, for people who, uh, who who feel uncomfortable, maybe in uh, in true liberty and true freedom, and um, perhaps they've made mistakes in their lives, and they expect other people to pay for it, right? They expect uh, <laughs> they expect the stolen funds that have been pro procured from uh, from taxation or extortion. And they they uh, feel a right to them, right? They 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 feel like they are entitled to them. And this is this is exactly what government uh, bestows on people is a sense of entitlement. Okay, it's like it's like I am living, I am entitled to free health care, free education, uh, free food, free housing, whatever, free for name what you want. <laughs> but what does that mean, entitlement? You know, it's like. You know, when you're living on a desert island, you know, you're with like 50 or 100 people, you know, and you say, I am entitled to free health care, free, f like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> the absurdity is apparent, you know, what, what the hell, you know, work, <laughs> you know, earn your living, you know, what are you, what are you just sitting around saying I'm entitled, just work and, you know, enjoy the fruits of your labor, that's, that's what it comes down to, you know, it's very simple, liberty is quite simple. So, um... So yeah, to finish up, I uh, this is a uh, this is a plea for everyone to um, try to realize their uh, the power of spontaneous order in nature as well as in us, since we are um, inseparable from nature. We are nature. Um, <clears throat> that uh, spontaneous order is the kernel of voluntary anarchy. Okay, at all levels, at all levels. Okay, and if we are to if we are to realize a free society in any in any respect, we have to uh, we have to respect this um, fundamental idea that um, things can move efficiently when there are no overlords and masters. Okay, very simple idea. So uh, with that, I'll. Um, I'll finish up and thank you for listening. This is um, Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network. 
wishing you all have a wonderful day. Take care.